If you're happily married, I envy you. It's a scary world out here in the dating scene. Not only do you have to find someone who checks off all the boxes in your list, but you have to find someone who's not lying, pretending to be someone else, or just in it for the sex. And I think we can all agree that sex can be the best and worst part of dating. Hooking up is probably one of the most controversial dating topics out there. What is casual sex and hookup culture doing to dating? Consistency is key. Have you ever been incredibly anxious before doing something or going somewhere new? This is called learned anxiety. We're anxious because there's a possibility of rejection, losing self-esteem or even loss of your self-identity if it doesn't go well. Now let's apply the same idea to hookup culture. Whether you're meeting people on dating apps, through friends, or the good old-fashioned way, there's always a hint of uncertainty. Do they actually like me? Was it just that one night? But they said they've never met anyone like me. According to the UK's National Health Service, a study was conducted to look at the connection between casual sex and psychological health. The study found that those who reported having casual sex also had low self-esteem, life satisfaction, psychological satisfaction, and happiness. By adding casual sex into the equation, you open the door to a lot of what-ifs that tend to shake up your mental well-being. Introducing a wild card of this sort, it allows your idea of yourself and your life to be questioned leaving room for doubt. When you have consistency in a person, such as talking to or dating one person casually, we don't have to ask why that last partner left, why they ghosted, or why they chose someone else without any explanation. It allows for stability to honestly evaluate how the relationship fits into your life. What did you put in your body? We used to say our bodies are temples, and it's a sacred place that we should care for with all of our actions and words. When casual sex is added to the mix, it's not just your mental health that you should worry about. You also need to keep your physical health at the top of your mind too. According to the CDC, sexually transmitted diseases or STDs continue to increase with each year. By 2021, there have been 2.5 million reported cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, or syphilis. There are medicines available, but there aren't any licensed vaccines for these STDs. There has even been a strain of gonorrhea found in Massachusetts which is believed to be resistant against the antibiotic. Having casual, unplanned, and or unprotected sex can greatly increase your chances of getting an STD diagnosis. On top of getting an STD, some STDs, like chlamydia and gonorrhea, can be asymptomatic. You may not even have any symptoms that something is wrong and living with an STD for an extended period of time can have other effects on the body. For example, in women, living with chlamydia for an extended period of time can impact fertility. Now it is possible to contract an STD from a consistent partner. However, it's more appropriate and healthy to have a conversation about sex health with a partner rather than a hookup. Putting fate on hold. Neurodivergent friends, this one's for you. For those of us who are diagnosed with a personality disorder, we're typically searching for dopamine rather than digging deep to the root of the problem. And so, when someone comes along and tells you how attractive you are and is all hands, I'm pretty sure most of us would get the butterflies. As long as it's all consensual. Next thing you know, you're in their arms and are whisked away to a home you've never been and, well, you know how the rest goes. What just happened? Your brain got the dopamine and endorphin fix that it had been craving for. Casual sex, along with other behaviors like substance abuse, is a way to gather dopamine called dopamining. So you don't feel the lows. This is also a way to self-sabotage yourself to avoid working on yourself and or finding your actual person. You may feel good in the moment, but this is just a band-aid for the bigger concern. Codependency There are a lot of different attachment styles that can be created in multiple different ways. Typically, your attachment style is created by how your caretakers raised you, and that same attachment style will show up in your relationship. The most common attachment style seen in those pursuing casual sex is the anxious attachment style, where you will want to be close to others but are worried no one wants to be around you. This is also where you crave someone else for validation, for a bump of self-esteem. It's a never-ending cycle because it feels like casual sex is the only way to fill the emotional intimacy gap that you're lacking. This ends up validating the idea that you need someone else around, and it stops you from learning who you are as an individual. Ultimately, this can stop you from growing into the person you were meant to be. Hooking up in casual sex can be fun in the moment, but there's a lot more that goes on in the brain, and hooking up isn't always a negative thing. We want to represent each topic fairly. 
If you want to hear some of the positive aspects of casual sex or even have some personal stories of happily ever after, let us know in the comments. What are your thoughts on this topic? Please let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to Psych2Go for more content. And as always, thank you for watching.